Enter hero. Brave, noble, capable of self-narration. You like ice with that? Never send a man to do a lady's work. Time for some surprises. Oh, let's get serious. So we're catching up on Fable Legends here at the Xbox Showcase at E3. So David, can you tell us what, what's new with Fable Legends here at E3 this year? Well, the biggest thing we've shown off is a lot of progress and evolution. We started a closed beta late last year in around October, and literally 100,000 users of players have been inviting into the beta. Every weekend, thousands of them are playing, rotating through the game and having a great experience. The best part about that for us is getting to show off our work to the world. Even if it's only a small slice of the world yet, They've been teaching us so much about how to make the game better. And then we've been building more and more of the world. Last year we showed off just one level, one quest that we were building in Fable Legends. Now we've built many of them. We got to show them off in the keynote earlier today, and we're showing off a new level that we built here, and new characters and heroes. So the game keeps being built. We showed off our 11th hero now at this show, a character named Celeste, who's really fun and different to play. And it's just the breadth of the experience that has always marked what Fable is. Doing cool different things, going through different environments, fighting different kinds of creatures that we're really starting to be able to build now the game's in full-scale production. You mentioned a lot of different things there that i got to pick up on. So, first of all, can you tell us a little bit about this, this new environment that you're showing off here yeah. behind us? This is a quest called Chasing Wendell Glass. It happens in the forest of Rosewood where our heroes are going to rescue someone who's gone missing, you might guess from his name, um, who's gone missing and they're going out to discover what's going on. But in the path of doing that, they're going to start to discover some of the real mythology of what's going on in the world of Albion. A character you saw in the trailer earlier today, this Lady of Rosewood, she's our nemesis in our first season. That's the kind of big reveal we did of that kind of cool different character. A character that our villain player is going to be able to control. But as you explore the world and you explore more of this time period, you're going to get to understand what she wants and how you can have a chance of defeating this evil character. I thought it was pretty nice to get that sort of that villain's perspective because it's, I mean, You've got to have some sort of motivation, not just to be sort of evil for evil's sake, right? Yeah, she's not evil just because she likes to ha-ha cackle evilly, right? She feels like this is her forest, right? This is her space that humans and now heroes are coming into because whatever, they want loot, because they want to find the old world magical artifacts and whatever their other motivations are. Some heroes are in this because they're good-hearted, just like previous table games, but some heroes are in this for money or power. Right? Some heroes are in this because they like to have, be violent, right? I can't blame her for trying to defend her space. And you know players are in it for loot, and that's, that's not... Always are. Yeah. I mean, that is, of course, part of the fun of RPGs, but it, we've gotten very meta with them these days, and we take apart that kind of mythology that heroes are in this to do violence, to gain XP, and they're in this to find treasure chests to take home loot. It's very, you know, pre-colonial, if you will. Well, that, that's an angle to take on it. Well, maybe we shouldn't think too much about what we do in video games, right? It is still meant to be lighthearted fun at the end of the day. Right, so can you tell us a little bit more about that experience that sort of crafting the game this way? Because it is very different from sort of building a great RPG for many, many years and then putting it out there without any feedback. It's incredibly different. I'm, we've really, I've never done anything like it. Lionhead's never done anything. We've always had user research and internal testing groups, but putting it out there for thousands of people to play and give us feedback on, we've literally put maps out there in front of them that are white boxes, have no art whatsoever. We warned them it was coming, so like, hey, look, we know this isn't a bug. This is going to be a very ugly looking level. But that's the only time, you know, we have this level that's as pretty as the level behind you. You can tweak some things here and there. You can move this tree and this rock around, but the geo is fundamentally set, you know, because these levels are so big and so beautiful that starting one over and throwing it out, you'd be throwing away tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, of work from an art team that has you know dozens of people working on it trying to make the game look this beautiful for you to play. Um, so we need to put really unfinished work in front of our testers, and God bless them, most of them have really enjoyed the chance of contributing really early on. So what, what's, 
you, you talked about season one, you're sort of starting to give us the full picture of what that will entail. What, what's, the, what's the roadmap ahead now with the game, with the project? So we're going to be doing more closed beta testing for another few months. Um, we're going to release the game into a kind of open beta later this year in the holiday. I don't have a date for you, but obviously holiday this year, all of you will be able to play it. Um, I hope you'll visit FableLegends.com, sign up. Whether you're going to play it on Windows 10 or on Xbox, it'll be free for you to play. It's a free-to-play title, and you can download the game and let, let us know what you think of it. Any, any uh, what, what's that experience been like? Because that, that's not that many months ago that you announced uh, the, the sort of the yeah. cross-platform thing. How's, how's it uh, progressing with both versions in parallel? Well, it hasn't been that hard, really, you know, to be honest with you, right? Uh, we had to make sure that the mouse and keyboard interface felt great. Now, there are characters that I still prefer to play with a controller, melee characters especially, but you can play anything on either one, you know. Um, you can plug in a controller and switch back dynamically. The HUD will just adjust based on what you're doing. So it'll change from having keyboards to f Xbox face buttons, right? Um, but to be honest, since a lot of the work is hosted on our dedicated servers that Microsoft provides with Thunderhead, it's not that big a deal, right? And naturally enough, as we've been building Fable Legends over the last year, we do all of our dev work on a PC. So making a PC client really wasn't that hard. Um, and it, it lets us bring the game to a whole new and bigger audience. And uh, what, how, you, you're talking about season one now. What, what, do you, what do you see like the grander roadmap, if you will, for the whole project? What's, what's the so, idea? So we want to make this content for years to come, right? So we're going to launch with one season of content, but then a few a month or so after that, we'll start the second season with a new story arc that explores new areas of Albion, right? We see this as an opportunity to grow Albion to be a bigger place than we've ever been able to do before and tell a whole variety of new stories, new nemesis for you to fight, and continue to release new characters and make a really big cast of characters that all interact with each other differently. Do you have ideas to sort of expand the, the, the basic gameplay concept as well and in different I mean, directions? We have a lot of new features we would like to take this, you know, a lot of clever ideas that some of which may seem obvious, some of which we're holding in the bank, right? Um, we think that we can continue to add big new features to this title out in post-release because it's just a download, right? We don't have to worry about spinning a disc that that's the last edition of the game. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you very much.